Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, I went back to the late 80s to take a look at Randy Meisner and he was performing Take It to the Limit. Unfortunately, this got blocked worldwide, so this is the re-edit and the re-upload. So you guys know the drill. You can click on the link in the description below to watch the video that I've just watched, and I'll also pin it to the top of the comment section as well. So go and watch the video and then come back here for the analysis, and I'll see you guys in the comment section. I'm just gonna jump in here. As always, the link to this video is gonna be in the description below, so you guys can click on the link and check out the video in full without me interrupting. But just talking about Randing's voice and the control that he has and the different departments of his voice that he goes to is something that I'm gonna explore in this video. A great performance by the band as a whole as well. Dynamically, just sitting it in that sweet spot and not overplaying. It is a song that has to be played right in order to get the right expression and having Randy on lead vocal is always going to achieve that connection and that expression. And this was, by the way, the first song that the Eagles sold one million copies of. So it was a monster hit and with Randy's writing included, it just gives it that extra something when the guy who has been part of the writing actually gets on that lead vocal. And I know that he was a little bit shyer than your standard performer and getting out to the front of the stage, he felt a little bit self-conscious about it, but he had such a great voice. The original audio for this video is really quiet, so I will try and boost that up for you guys in the edit because it's gonna be better for you to hear the different departments of Randy's voice, his head voice, chest voice, falsetto, mixed voice. He's got it all going on, and the way that he navigates between these registers, because you can spot it, but like all the top singers and top artists, they have this ability vocally to blend the registers together. We're talking about high up there. We're in the tenor range here, and above that A4, which is classed as the tenor range, and anything above that is still classed as the tenor range. You might have it classed also as counter tenor, but here we're consistently in chest voice at an F sharp and a G sharp. He does hit a B4 in his chest voice in the chorus here, which means that it's gonna become more challenging because the voice wants to thin out. It wants to get lighter the higher up you go in pitch and in your range, which means that hitting high notes in chest voice is a challenge. We've got that here, a B4 is right up there and you'll be able to find exactly where that is. We'll get into that in a second, but also flipping up into head voice, sometimes you'll see Randy hit a note that is way up there and it seems like he's more relaxed because he's releasing into that head voice and not taking the weight of chest voice with his pitch as he ascends. So we've got some impressive pitches going on here and in chest voice, that B4, like I said, right up there in the tenor range. And just so you guys know where that is in the song, it's the tagline of the song, take it to the limit. And it's the it that is that B4. And without warming up my voice, I'm gonna give it a go. It's the take it to the limit. Just that it is that top note. But the interesting thing about it is the way that take it as a phrase is connected. So it means that the it follows the take so quickly, there's no opportunity to flip up into a different part of the voice because the phrase is so quick. And that's what you will see with Randy when he sings take it, the it he leans back because he's getting that in chest voice in order to get it to sound the same as the take. So it's one clean vocal phrase that sounds consistent. And you can imagine singing take it with take in chest voice and then it in falsetto is gonna sound really dodgy. And that's why only a guy like Randy can sing this live so consistently. Just to explain it a little bit more clearly, in case you haven't done any vocal training or you don't sing and you don't know how the male voice works, 
you start off like I am here in chest voice and then you have a mixed voice which is a blend of chest voice and head voice. Head voice is above mixed voice. If you're seeing this as a pillar of sound, we've got chest voice, mixed voice, head voice and falsetto. And falsetto can also be head voice. So if you're imagining all of these notes really high up, even though that's not how it works and people do think about notes being high and then they strain and it's a big problem, don't think of it as in height, but different departments of the voice. Great singers can blend all of these registers into one consistent note because there are things called bridges between these parts of the voice. And that's what you hear sometimes with yodeling. It's that chest voice flipping up into head voice, going over that vocal break. And that's what it sounds like. So it can be used artistically, but when you don't want to hear that break, sometimes you have to pull the chest voice higher up to where you would normally be in mixed voice or head voice to keep that sound consistent, which is exactly what we've got here. Like I said, that B4 is in chest voice. It's not being handed off fully to head voice and it's definitely not falsetto. Like I said, the great singers can start to thin out the voice without you realizing they're doing it by adjusting their tonal quality to match that of their chest voice. And the great thing about Randy here is that he's using his voice artistically for the song because this is not a song where you want to be sounding like you're belting the whole way through. You want that lighter vocal quality. This is the other thing about head voice and falsetto. They do get mixed up because of being able to use your head voice and just put more air through the vocal cords to make it sound like falsetto. Whereas they can be totally different departments where you can bring the head voice down into chest voice, but you can never bring falsetto down into chest voice because they are two totally separate registers. I think there is a part at the end of this performance, which I will point out where Randy goes to his falsetto and not his head voice. Right in the intro here, we did have a classic head voice sound that Randy was making and just putting a little bit more air through his vocal cords. So it did sound like falsetto, but there was a little bit too much connection in there from what I could hear in order to call it a pure falsetto sound. And just for reference, the highest note that Randy hits is an F sharp five in this performance where he just releases it into his head. And generally you'll be able to hear when his head voice comes in because of the clarity of the tone, it is so well connected and it's not strained at all, but we are gonna get back into the performance and we'll watch it all the way to the end. And then I might give you some timestamps to maybe rewind and look out for these little points where Randy changes which register he's using for his voice. But let's get back into it. And there we have it. What a great vocal performance that was. And right at the end of the song, the way that Randy, using chest voice, puts a little bit more air through his vocal cords to get that extra little bit of expression in there. And it's exactly the same principle when he sings with head voice. Like I said, it is so hard to tell the difference between falsetto and head voice in great singers because in exactly the same way that you can put air through your vocal cords when you're talking like this, if I want to talk like this, great singers can do that with their head voice. So something that I want to bring to your attention in this video is at two minutes and 15, because we get a great example of chest voice and head voice. It's during the word freedom, Randy starts in chest voice and then he lets his voice flip up into head voice. And because it's a different register, he doesn't connect the word, you have a little break in there. So you can listen out for that, two minutes and 17 seconds. Have a look at it because it's such a great example too. The tonal quality Randy has in his head voice and the way that he just manages to flip between those registers so effortlessly. There's another part slightly later on at three minutes and 23 seconds where we can hear this vocal cord connection that Randy gets with his voice that is such a clean head voice sound. I think it's on the word please. He's got this please. It is such a clean connection there that it's definitely not falsetto. 
And then just a few seconds later, three minutes and 27 seconds, he then goes to falsetto. And you can hear the difference between the really connected head voice sound and the falsetto sound that Randy goes to. And that is the main difference between head voice and falsetto. When you're singing with falsetto, all of your air releases because the vocal cords are far apart. They're not connected like head voice. Head voice, you can hold a note for ages. I haven't even mentioned the bass playing yet or anything about the band because I've really been focusing on Randy's voice because that is the thing that I was asked to analyze in the first place but also the main center of attraction whenever you're listening to Randy sing, all of the control that he has going on there. I won't have too much time to get into Randy's background, unfortunately, but he's one of those guys that worked at it. The success didn't come overnight. All throughout the 60s, he was playing and singing and doing as much as he could. In 1970, he wasn't making any money from music, so he got a job at a tractor dealership and would just play in the evenings in Gold Rush the band and that featured Stephen A. Love from New Riders of the Purple Sage. But Rick Nelson got in touch and told Randy to resume his music career in LA. So Randy did and in mid-1971 is when he got recruited for the roster of musicians to support Linda Ronstadt and Linda's here somewhere on the channel if you want to check her out independently. But that roster also included Don Henley and Glenn Frey and Bernie Ledden and that's how the whole Eagles thing started. It's great to have a look at such a great vocalist, but also you get an appreciation of what Randy did for the Eagles sound because he had that ability to access so many different registers that you could always get a different tonal quality to his voice. And when you're talking about harmonizing and putting together multiple layers of vocals in the studio as well, to have a guy like Randy that can access all of this range is such a luxury because he can not only sing the low parts in chest voice, he can get into mixed voice, head voice, falsetto if you want it as well. So it really does open up so many doors when you're talking about a guy with this kind of vocal ability. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!